have you been taking the NAD plus precursors, the super supplements like nicotinamide riboside NR or the soon to be banned by the FDA nicotinamide mononucleotide NMN? If so, you might be wondering about the best free lifestyle things you can do to increase your NAD plus levels naturally and then some of the alternative products and more advanced stuff you can do to get even bigger effects. So in this video, I will give you the basics of the science that you need to know in order to understand these interventions and then the list of things you'd be crazy not to try. First of all, what is NAD plus? It's an important coenzyme that's naturally found throughout our body and it's used for metabolic processes, for energy generation, and as a sort of gas for protective proteins throughout the body called the sirtuins, as well as many other things. The reason coming up with an NAD plus game plan is so important is because the lifestyle factors of modern living tend to deplete our natural levels faster paired with the natural decline, the massive decline of levels as we age. Last I saw, the levels are less than half what they were previously by age 30. And that drop off only continues as we age. So imagine someone in their late 40s or 50s or 60s, how low their NAD levels are gonna be. When that happens, bodily systems and processes start operating suboptimally and just don't work as well as they should. And all kinds of symptoms of aging occur as a result. And the entire process of aging actually speeds up too. There are two crucial concepts to understand in order to keep your NAD plus levels constantly topped off to where they should be. The first is to focus on the recycling process the body has to maintain NAD naturally. That is called the salvage pathway, and it constitutes between, I think it's 80 and 95% of your overall NAD plus levels. So that needs to be a huge focus for us. And then the other one, the flashier side, is the precursors and different things we can do to increase our levels exogenously from supplements, from foods, that kind of thing. And if you wanna know about these lifestyle practices that you can do, I will link an article below of all the top things you can do, the cheap and free and super inexpensive things you can do to keep your NAD plus levels high via the salvage pathway and also some cheap precursors you can add into your routine should you choose. The very first lifestyle habit is to practice some form of time-restricted eating. That means finishing your last meal a couple hours before bed, ideally three to four. That will keep your NAD pH levels where they should be instead of dropping when you consume food too close to bed. Up next is entering ketosis. You can do that naturally through a low carbohydrate diet or using an exogenous supplement such as C8 MCT oils or ketone salts or ketone esters. There are scores of clinical studies showing that ketones upregulate the delicate NAD plus to NADPH ratio. Yet other research suggests that certain ketone bodies mimic the increased cellular senescence effects of the famous precursors NMN and NR. And finally, a study in cell metabolism showed that ketones elevate NAD plus levels in brain neurons. After ketosis, we have movement and movement increases NAD several ways. First, exercise causes our body to create more energy factories, as they're sometimes called mitochondria. And that process is called mitochondrial biogenesis. The more mitochondria we have, the higher NAD+. And both aerobic and resistance training also increase something called NAMPT, which in turn increases NAD+. After that, we have a factor that few people discuss, and that is minimizing your exposure to non-native electromagnetic fields as much as possible. Every time we're exposed to 
in EMF, the body uses a enzyme called PARP, P-A-R-P, to repair each DNA break. And in turn, PARP consumes 150 to 200 molecules of NAD+. This form of electromagnetic radiation also increases the levels of another NAD consumer, and that one's called NOx. So by avoiding EMF exposure, we're reducing PARP and we're reducing NOx, resulting in higher NAD plus levels. Then there's the matter of diet. You want to eat produce that's rich in phytonutrients because these activate the NRF2 pathway. And the NRF2 pathway activates hundreds of different genes related to longevity and stress and antioxidant defenses. It also boosts NAD plus by increasing the levels of NADPH and NQO1. Up next, we have circadian alignment or regulating all of the body's internal clocks. The easy way is to get up and sleep with the sun, get some natural morning light and avoiding as much light as possible in the evening, especially bright overhead blue light. Guys, these are just some of the things that I personally do, the lifestyle habits and practices, but I'm sure there are lots of other things there that I didn't include. And as new research comes out, be sure to leave your thoughts in the comments below because there's a lot of smart people in this community and they can really help you out. And now that we've gone through some of the lifestyle things, let's move on to the products and supplements and things that people are commonly taking to replace NMN and as an alternative to MIB-626. So the first one is the other common NAD plus precursor, and that is nicotinamide riboside, NR for short. And that one has a lot of human research. It seems to target the brain a little more preferably than NMN. And experts flip flop between which is better, NMN or NR. And if NMN gets banned, NR could be a suitable alternative. There was a recent scare with a new study coming out showing that NR may increase the risk of certain cancers. But I believe that study wasn't done very well. And if they tested other compounds, they'd find the same thing. Anything that boosts NAD plus levels significantly, I believe will lead to similar results. But that's pure conjecture at this point. So despite that, NR is still one viable alternative. Another popular one is plain old niacin vitamin B3, sometimes called nicotinic acid. NR is actually a derivative of vitamin B3 of niacin. You could say it's an enhanced version. There's a bit of research showing that plain old niacin, cheap niacin, can work wonders to quench NAD plus deficiency. And although some people recommend high dose, full flush niacin, I don't think that's a good idea because it comes with its own side effects and problems such as it consumes important methyl groups and it can also lead to issues with mast cell activation so instead i personally take about 25 milligrams of standard full flush non-timed niacin every day next you have a bioflavonoid called apigenin and this one is found in lots of brightly colored produce it's a popular polyphenol supplement that keeps nad plus plus high via a different route than some of the other supplements. One of the core enzymes responsible for breaking down NAD plus is called CD38 and apigenin inhibits CD38. So by inhibiting an enzyme that breaks down NAD plus, you keep NAD plus higher. Then you have some of the less direct supplements that still can improve NAD levels. And the first one that virtually everyone can stand to benefit from is magnesium. It's the most deficient mineral in the diet. By some estimates, up to 90% of Americans are deficient. Magnesium is great for maintaining cell stability, RNA and DNA synthesis, and helping repair cells. There are tons of different forms. I like magnesium malate, magnesium threonate or magnesium glycinate and magnesium glycinate in particular has the advantage of also increasing nadph after that you have what's called molecular hydrogen or just h2 for short 
And this is one of the most exciting antioxidants of our time. It's a selective antioxidant, meaning it does not indiscriminately quell all free radicals. Some are beneficial and the molecular hydrogen does not inhibit the beneficial free radicals, only the ones causing bodily harm. And this one works several ways. First of all, it helps quell and reduce some of the stressors that otherwise deplete NAD+. And several papers have shown that it also improves the NAD plus to NADPH ratio as well. Up next, we have a small molecule called 5-amino-1-MQ. And this one does a number of cool and unusual things. First of all, it activates the protective gene called CERT1, and it also improves metabolic function. There was a study in mice I saw that showed that just 10 days of supplementation decreased body mass by 7%. Granted, it was a mouse study, but it still seems quite promising. On the NAD side, 5-amino-1-MQ seems to inhibit NNMT, which keeps NAD plus elevated for a longer period of time. Then we have a class of compounds called the growth hormone secretagogues. Certainly work with your doctor or medical professional to make sure these are suitable for you. Don't go out and just take these on your own. But what the growth hormone secretagogues do is they get your body to naturally increase its production of growth hormone. Unlike injecting straight growth hormone, this sends a signal to your body instructing it to create more without forcing it, giving it a better safety margin, and it's much easier to procure. And these work by getting the body to create more mitochondria via a process called mitochondrial biogenesis, resulting ultimately in higher NAD+. Finally, to close it out, if you want a modern solution to circadian rhythm and you're unable to get sunlight, you can use certain circadian and training peptides such as vasoactive intestinal peptide, abbreviated VIP. And this one works by synchronizing the rhythms of the clock genes and strengthening the sleep-wake cycle, making NAD plus follow a predictable and healthy rise and fall as it should throughout the day. Although that would be my last choice if you've already done everything else. Well, there you have it. You made it through the end. Not many people do. You're part of the 1% dedicated to reaching their full potential. For more information and to see the new ways I'm discovering to increase your NAD plus levels naturally and with some modern products, I will go ahead and put an article in the description below. Go ahead and check that out. If you have any questions, you have personal experience, or I'm missing anything, let me know in the comments below and we will turn this into a conversation. Take care.